So welcome, welcome. Thank you. I, I've never seen a finance person mobbed like a rock star <laughs> before. So tell us, tell our audience uh, who you are, for those who may not know. Uh, who yeah, my name is Akiyumi Adeshida and president of the African Development Bank. Fantastic. And like I said, you're very popular and um, you know, you have been at, at the helm of the AFDB for quite some time. How's it going there? It's going extremely well. Yeah. You know, I, could, I couldn't think of anything much more humbly than to be given the responsibility to go, be given the resources, to be given the trust uh, to go and change the continent of my birth. And yes. so um, when I was first elected president in, my, in 2015, I said this was not a job. It's not a job, it's a mission. It's, right, you it's know, a calling. Me, it's a calling. Yeah. Me. And it's going extremely well. You know, when we started uh, the bank, um, you know, one of the first things I, I had my team to think about was, um, it's called African Development Bank. Right. But for me, the most important part is not just the bank, it's the development part. Yeah. And so how do you make sure that we are working on things that matter to ordinary people Absolutely. on the street so that they can see the relevance? And so we started with something called the high fives. You right. know, there are five priorities of the bank, which is to light up and power Africa, which is universal access to electricity, uh, to feed Africa, which is right. to food security, uh, to industrialize Africa, uh, to integrate all the economies of Africa, integrate Africa, and to improve the quality of life of the people of Africa, which sure. has to do with education, health, water, uh, sanitation, and things like that. Absolutely. You know, and it's incredible in the last, um, you know, I've been president now for nine years, you know, in the last seven years that we've computed that, our work has impacted on more than 400 million people. Wow. And so, Congratulations. Are, yeah, thank you. The people having electricity, people having access to um, a new transport, you know, yeah. our businesses having access to financing, women, you know, and all of that. So I'm really very excited about the work that we've done and um, uh, happy for the trust that they've given us and, and I think we're delivering great value for yeah, Africa. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, you have more than anyone raised the profile of the AFDB because, like you say, the, the average person on the street doesn't know what the bank is and what they do, even though it's a very important to their... <laughs> yes, exactly. And uh, so congratulations to you Thank for you. helping to raise the profile and, and really doing some impactful projects. So, I mean, your connection with Gabby, where, where, where did that start and how, how, is, how important it, is it? Well, you know, I mean, I, I, I am somebody who believes that um, Africa has tremendous amount of opportunities. And, and therefore, um, when Gabby was launched, I was excited. In fact, I was probably the, I was the first person they actually called to come and give a keynote address. Amazing. Yeah, because, you know, um, the, the, the Global Africa Business Initiative is how do you take Africa's opportunities to the world? And Absolutely. how do you showcase Africa? And that's very, very important, yeah. you know, because often perception, you know, becomes our reality. You know, folks talk about Africa as if it's the most risky part of the world. You know, but you know, we, I don't believe that. No, you know? it isn't. And I, and I live I, in Africa. Yeah, yes. you know, and I, but you know, facts matter. So it's not just me saying it. Absolutely. So we looked and we asked um, Moody's Analytics to do an assessment of, you know, cumulative loss rates on infrastructure. They did rather cumulative loss rates on infrastructure assets over the last 14 years. Right. In different parts of the world. And guess what they found? The loss rate, you know, in, in, uh, in Africa is 1.9%. The loss rate in America is 6.6%. Wow. The loss rate in uh, 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 Eastern Europe is 12%. Uh, percent. The loss rate in Latin America, 10%. That's and in incredible. Western Asia, 4.6%. So Africa has the least. Yeah. Actually, Africa pays. Has the worst reputation. In, in terms of risk assessment. Yes. So I don't think Africa gets a good, uh, fair rating based it on doesn't. its risk. Yeah. Right. So Africa is not risk. If you look at a risk return, Africa is not as risky as any, right. anywhere else. So that's that's first thing. So I think having these kind of uh, gatherings where you people get to see, hear about businesses doing very well in Africa yeah. is very, very important. very important. But the other thing that I think this allows us to really do as well is to understand that when investors are going to come to Africa, you know, I'm not saying there are no risks, don't get me wrong. Of course. Right? But every continent has it. And every yes. every every country has it. Yes. Right? So, but what we're talking about is if there are project risk, market risk, financial risk, or political risk, right, that is mitigating, I mean, that is limiting your interest or ability to deploy capital, that's what we are set up to do. Right. And that's why I actually set up uh, uh, what's called the uh, uh, Africa Investment Forum in right. 2018 
together with a lot of uh, uh, African financial institutions and others from Europe. Basically what we've do, done is that um, we bring project developers together and investors together and those that are going to be de-risking the project in investment boardrooms. Right. And then they discuss it. In the last um, you know, five years, because we were affected by COVID, um, you know, so we couldn't really do much during that time. But in the last five years that we've done it, the additions of it, we've mobilized way over $180 billion of investment interest commitments to, to Africa, uh, for which you know, more than almost uh, you know, 30, uh, $35 billion of those have been closed and others are in different uh, stages of closure. That means that Africa is bankable. Right. You know, I mean, I tell you, you know, um, when I take a look at uh, the opportunities that Africa has, why wouldn't I be excited? Right. We have the youngest population in the world. Exactly. Right? exactly. And they're smart. So much going for Yeah, Africa. they're smart, entrepreneurial, yeah. and all of that. Yeah. We have 65% of the uncultivated arable land to feed the world. It's not in Asia, it's not Latin America, yeah. it's not in China, it's in Africa. It's so, in what Africa. Africa does with agriculture will determine the future of food in the world. Right. Everybody is talking about energy transition, right? Energy transition, electric vehicles, right? Well, the, the size of that market today is $7.5 trillion and it's going to go to $57 trillion. Yeah. And Africa will determine that because we have, you know, uh, a 70, 80% of the world's platinum, we have lithium, we have copper, we got manganese, right. we, got, we got all the things that are actually needed to she make that successful. energy. Yeah. Yeah. But here's what I'm going to say. Yeah. We are not going to, again, be poor by exporting our raw green metals. We want to make sure that we are actually adding value to that. Right. And I'll give you a concrete example. To make a lithium ion precursor battery, right, in Africa, right, it's three times cheaper than in China, China? Really? in Poland. So or which the countries States. are they making that? Well, they... you know, you know, they make in all the other countries, but but the what you need for the lithium is coming out of right, Democratic right, right. Republic of Congo. Of Congo of course. And so so what we're doing is ourselves and other financial institutions working together, you know, ourselves African um, Import Export Bank. Uh, but also African Financial Corporation and others working to put together with the AU a plan to actually add value, develop right. and add value to all our green model, uh, metals. So I think that Africa has no business with poverty. It is, just it have doesn't. to unlock our assets and, and turn it I will wealth. stop you right there. Okay, okay. I love what you said. Africa has no business with poverty. None. And I know that with people like you at the helm, that will soon be a thing of the past. That's we right. Hope. That's yes. right. So I want you to tell our viewers how you're helping to make Africa unstoppable. Well, you know, uh, first and foremost, is just to have confidence in Africa. I am an eternal optimist in Africa. You know. Um, people ask me, you know, why is it that you talk about Africa all the time, you know, as if it has no problems. I say, look, my business is not setting challenges. My business is actually marketing Africa's vast opportunities. And those opportunities are there in terms of our youth, in agriculture, in, uh, in terms of our natural capital, uh, in terms of a continent that now has the Africa continental free trade area, a market of $3.4 trillion. So Africa can no longer be ignored. Our job, our responsibility, is to make sure that we can develop good businesses, supported with infrastructure and finance, to make Africa a global powerhouse in manufacturing and also creating wealth for our people. So that's what gets me excited every single day. Wow, fantastic. I could listen to you all day. Okay. I, I'm infected by your optimism. Thank you. I'm also an internal, uh, eternal oh, optimist for Africa. Yeah. So one day we will get Thank there. You. Thank, Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so very Thank much. You. Appreciate your time.